Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not ready yet. <coughs> I, I, I haven't apologized to everyone yet for being late, so Carlos, I have to apologize to Carlos for being late. I'm going to take a sip of water. Are we started? Are we good? <clears throat> hold, hold it. One more time. <clears throat> Before I start, I'd like to indicate that we're joined by Council Members Menchaca, uh, Levin, uh, Diaz, and Drum, the author of the bill that we're talking about today. Good morning. I'm Jim Gennaro, Chair of the Committee on Environmental Protection. And today we'll vote on intro 455A, uh, um, authored by Councilmember Danny Drum, which will replace the diesel school buses currently transporting New York City school children with zero emission all electric school buses by 2035. Um, this committee previously held a hearing on intro 455 in December 2018 and received testimony from the uh, DOE, school bus manufacturers, environmental and climate justice advocates, public health experts, and interested members of the public. And Danny has been working on the bill since then. I applaud him, as I will many times in this statement. Uh, most school buses in the U.S. still operate using diesel engines, including those operating in New York. Currently, DOE's Office of Pupil Transportation contracts with approximately 65 companies to provide bus service for about 150,000 students. In total, this school bus fleet includes about 10,700 vehicles operating 8,500 routes. Spending for pupil, for pupil transportation comprises 5% of the DOE's overall budget with approximately 1.3 billion allocated for fiscal 2019. Uh, New York State reimburses the city for approximately 50% of the cost of student transportation. Use of these diesel fuel school buses uh, places unnecessary health risks on New York City's school children. The potential health impacts from this exposure, including increased asthma triggers and uh, impaired lung function, are caused in part by the inhalation of particulate matter and ground level ozone, among other pollutants, which are present in abundance in diesel exhaust. Children exposed to even low levels of ozone are at very significant risk for respiratory symptoms and for rescue medication use. Air pollution increases airway oxidative stress and decreases small airway function in asthmatic children. Uh, children riding in a school bus inhale, get this, seven to 70 times more exhaust than non-riding students inhale from all school bus emissions in the area. In New York City, some transit sectors have begun to explore or commit to transitioning away from diesel-powered vehicles. We all know that. Um, according, to, uh, um, according to New York City's roadmap to the 80 by 50 plan, the transportation sector produces 28% of the city's greenhouse gas emissions. In December 2015, Bill de Blasio announced New York City Green Fleet an effort to, quote, create the largest electric vehicle fleet of any U.S. city, close quote, with targets to reduce municipal vehicle emissions 50% by 2025 and 80% by 2035. Um, intro 455A would require the city to ensure that all school buses in use by September 1st, 2035 are all electric zero emission school buses 
the replacement of school buses shall be subject to the commercial availability and reliability of all electric zero emission buses and the technical and physical availability of related planned infrastructure, including but not limiting to included but not limited limited to the charging stations and and bus depots for all electric emission school buses that is a fancy way of saying that the city is looking for a way to kind of get out of this but i'm going to be around and i'm not going to let them do that and um where was i it should be noted that the technology exists right now to retrofit existing diesel powered school buses to all electric operation Councilmember Drum and I toured such a bus, and the cost of conversion is less than half of the cost of purchasing a, a new all-electric school bus. Take that. That's how we're going to get this done, Danny. Uh, this local law would also require the DOE to report to the mayor and the speaker on a variety of implementation targets with, within three reporting deadlines. Uh, you know, it talks about all the reporting deadlines. Yeah, 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 you get it. And so... Um, uh, but there are, but just the fact that there are these deadlines, that there are these markers, that there are these, you know, you know, you know milestones that have to be met, make this the good bill that it is. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this local law would also require that each of the three report. I don't know, we did that. Okay. Uh, for far too long, New York City school children have been exposed to hazardous air pollution while riding inside school buses on their way to school. With this legislation, that exposure will end finally allowing school children to breathe safely inside of school buses. Let me say that again, finally allowing school children to breathe safely inside of school buses. It's 2021, what the hell? Like they don't have that now, you know, but thank God we're doing it now. And reducing local emissions in the neighborhood these buses drive through. I recommend a yes vote on this vital environmental bill. I would like to thank the excellent committee staff who have done such great work over the years, committee counsel Samara Swanson, policy analyst Nadia Johnson, Ricky Chala, and financial analyst Jonathan Seltzer, and finally my legislative director Nabi Cower for all their hard work. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Jeff Baker who was on the phone with Danny and with me like the night before the bill got, got, got aged. It was a whole, it was a whole thing. Uh, so now let us hear from Councilmember Drum on his great bill. Once again, I you know, really applaud him in a special way for building in all the safeguards into this bill to make sure that this actually happens. I'll mention anecdotally that the council, that this committee passed uh, a, a, a school bus bill in 2005 to convert from diesel to um, alternative fuel. Not one school bus was ever converted. That was 16 years ago. And so this bill is better. That's why this is gonna happen. It's got the special force of Danny on it. And so we're gonna hear from him now. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Gennaro. And uh, thank you for being sure that you'll be around uh, to ensure that uh, this in fact becomes a reality for us in New York City. Uh, with the passage of intro 455, New York parents, teachers, students, bus drivers, and really all of us can breathe a lot easier. Thanks to the tireless work of advocates and this city council, dirty school buses choking our streets and our lungs will soon be a thing of the past. Earlier this year, Mayor de Blasio announced that the city had finally recognized the urgency of a cleaner, greener school bus fleet. Intro 455 and the intense advocacy around it helped guide his decision and its codification will ensure that the city stays on track, or should I say, en route as the entire fleet is electrified by 2035. There are undoubtedly global benefits to converting the country's biggest school bus fleet, but I would like to focus on the more immediate impacts. Environmental justice communities, such as the one that I represent, have had to deal with a host of economic and health disparities. Dirty buses and the noxious fumes they spew most impact the individuals who spend the longest time on them, drivers and special education and homeless students. In fact, parents concerned about their children's health were the ones who first brought to my attention the need to electrify our school buses. As a former teacher who experienced, albeit briefly, trouble breathing inside and around buses, I had to agree. And as I talked to more and more people, I realized that the impact extended even further. Residents near schools and bus stops have long suffered from the air and noise pollution of our now antiquated fleet. Thanks to the people who fought to make this happen, 
including Justin Wood and the New York Lawyers for the Public Interest, Carlos Castell Croak and the New York League of Conservation Voters, Tevin Grant, Committee Counsel Samara Swanston, my former colleague Costa Constantinides, uh, my uh, Legislative Director Sebastian McGuire, and um, this bill was first heard in Costa Constantinides Committee, and of course our current chairperson, James Gennaro, who I have to say, as soon as he became chair of this committee, made this bill move forward. Without your help and your support, uh, Councilmember Gennaro, Chair Gennaro, this would not have happened. And you have been an environmental champion for years. I admire you and thank you from the bottom of my heart for making sure that this legislation passed. Thank you, Danny. Let our work here inspire the rest of the country. If New York City can do this, every municipality can and should. Our children's future depends on it. Again, thank you. Thank you, council members. I, 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 once again, I, I, I'll, I'll end where I begin and, and you know, lauding you for your tenacity and you know, putting this up there, getting it heard, working with the advocates, making sure that we got to this good day. So this is really, a, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be part of it. And so is there anyone else that wishes to be heard? Uh, seeing none, I guess it's my turn to ask Bill to, uh, to call the record, to, to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on environmental protection, proposed introduction 455A, Chair Gennaro. I vote yes. Levin. I vote aye. Aye. I want to just underscore the importance of this bill, but really the incredible work by Councilmember Drum and Chair Gennaro in making this happen. This is, uh, these are our last weeks in the council and for at least Councilmember Drum and I, uh, and some others, and, and, and you, yeah. Uh, okay, it's for a lot of us. It's for a lot of us. I'm gonna uh, start crying now. <laughs> well, that's how I'm feeling. There's a lot of mourning in my heart, uh, but we're still working. And I'm just listening to you both talk about how much you've put in these last few efforts to make something beautiful happen that needs to happen. And I love the energy that you brought to your opening statement in terms of just like, what the hell is happening right now where kids can't, that's the energy that, that we bring. So thank you for that. And I vote aye. Uh, 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 thank you, council member. And I wish to be associated with council member Menchaka's remarks. D Dharma Diaz. I, I wrote a proud eye as a former PTA parent and a, a new grandma. I, I thank you for, for your efforts and for pushing it through. It's a sign of the times. So again, I thank you all. I vote aye. We have a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Item has been adopted by the committee. Uh, thank you. Are, are we leaving the record open for uh, Eric? I don't think we have the ability to, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, with that, this hearing is adjourned. This uh, vote is adjourned. <laughs>